Hey guys and welcome back. I'm Rachel O'Leary and it's time for a Tuesday tip. Now as you guys know if you've been around for a while I do a lot of work with fish outdoors in the summer months because it's the easiest way to breed them. There's readily available free live food through things like Daphnia and green water. I think it adds a really interesting visual as well as auditory element. The sound of the tubs is really relaxing. And you guys know that I put up a greenhouse in the past year that I've been using pretty heavily. But it's not all just fun and pleasure. There are a lot of different predators, uh, both aquatic and wildlife, that can be a real problem if you're trying to breed fish in outdoor tubs. So I thought today we would talk a little bit about them. Now, I went out to the greenhouse very early this morning and shot some footage of some of the ones that are in the tubs out there. I also shot some footage of what's going on in the bins that are outdoors, but first I wanted to talk to you a little bit about some of the wildlife predators. Now, the biggest problem is generally raccoons, and raccoons can be extremely destructive and very difficult to deal with. Um, I've never had a problem with them here, but they are well known for absolutely wrecking plants. Um, and in fact, I think one may have gotten into uh, my little seedling tray of carnivorous plants because it was all pulled apart, but I don't know for certain. Now, the best way to deal with raccoons is to put your bins as close to your house as possible. Um, I keep mine directly against my house and I have very little problems with either raccoons or deer by doing this. Deer can also eat aquatic plants. Um, now raccoons don't generally hurt the smaller fish that I work with. They can be tempted by things like goldfish or koi, but for the most part they just wreak havoc on our plants. Um, Another strategy for dealing with them is to set up motion lights so that if they were to get near your tubs, the lights kick on, they go away. But in my experience, even with our chickens, that hasn't been good. Um, a lot of people will use have a heart traps to capture raccoons, but you have to look at the local laws as to what you're allowed to do with them at that point. In a lot of places, you're not allowed to relocate them, so you kind of have to have a plan for what's next. Um, as far as deer, the same thing goes. You can put up fencing. Uh, usually it has to be over five feet to keep the deer from eating your plants, but again, keeping them close to the house and using motion lights generally works pretty well. Now also there are frogs, and a lot of different frogs will get in your tubs. I have only ever had issue with that when I use the very low tubs or when I have ponds that are set into the ground. And for the most part, I haven't found it to be a problem. You can simply net out the various tadpoles that you get and relocate them or grow them out. But I've never had any issue with the frogs predating actively on my fish, so I generally just leave them there. Now, I didn't set up any low tubs this year, so I don't have any frogs this year. Uh, but I have every other year, and again, it's never caused any appreciable difference in how many fry I get or in the adult fish in the tubs. I don't know if it's because they're so small, they just don't really, really get on the radar of the frogs, but again, it hasn't been a problem. What is a problem is aquatic insect larvae. So let's watch the footage I shot this morning of some of the various aquatic larvas that I experience in my tubs. Now there is one that I don't have any footage to show you of, and that is the predatory beetle larva, and those are really bad, but I've never had them, so... We'll stick with, with teaching you about the ones I do. So let's get going. One of the bugs I wanted to talk about was the water boatmen. They're these little fly looking things that swim at an angle. And they are in the Cor Corixidae genera, of which there's 55 types. And they're really commonly found in most still or slow moving waterways. And the good news is, is that they're non-predatory. They eat algae. Uh, for the most part, and other sort of detritus and microorganisms that grow in our ponds. Now, this was actually the first year I'd seen them, so I asked my friend Sheila what they were, as I was pretty concerned. Um, and they actually showed up right at the beginning of setting up the tubs. You can see they're pretty cool. Relatively small. Here's my finger for comparison. They're super teeny. Um... And this is basically all they do is swimming around eating algae. You'll, if you do a sweep of your tubs, like we talked about with the dragonfly larva, or like we will talk about with the dragonfly larva, you'll be sure to find some of these, especially if you're not filtering your bins. 
here, here we can see one in one of the tubs. It's actually a shrimp tub, and I just let them be because they don't eat baby shrimp. And the shrimp in this tub are doing really, really well. Now, if I were to find a uh, different kind of predatory larva in this tub, then I would have to remove them or come up with a plan. But since these guys are harmless, they just get to live the best life. Now, one pest that I find particularly difficult to deal with is actually a plant pest, and it's this stuff right here. And that's uh, actually a carnivorous plant, which you would think I would love, but those little tiny bladders can actually eat copepods, which is primary food source for the fish out here, and they can also eat baby, baby shrimplets. Um, now, it doesn't seem... It hasn't been too much of a problem out here yet. I've been manually removing it as the season goes on, but this stuff seemingly comes out of nowhere. Now, I think this particular one is Utricularia gibba, or the dwarf creeping bladderwort, and it makes these floating cushions, um, and it often is intertwined with other plants. And the thing that's really problematic is that it can regenerate from the tiniest piece, similar to that of duckweed, so it's really difficult to get rid of. It can be a real problem in our aquariums as well as out here in the tubs. I mean, it's kind of neat. I've thought about throwing some of it into the bog garden, but it is an aquatic aquatic type of um, bladder wart. It can get light yellow flowers, though, so we'll see. Maybe I'll leave it in a tub with some of the fish that are larger that won't be at risk, but it's really not ideal to have this out here, and it almost always shows up every season. We're out here by my outdoor tubs today, and I want to show you some things that I found and talk about what we can do about it. So let's get started. Now, as you guys know, normally I use very, very, very heavy planting in my tubs, but this year, because of my knee replacement, I just ran out of time, so it's pretty minimal. You can see we do have a pretty water lily flowering, and the plants that I put in here are doing quite well. The problem is... I have dragonfly larva for the first time in my tubs. And while I do enjoy seeing dragonflies around the tubs, now the problem with dragonflies is not the adults, it is the young. And the adult dragonflies will lay their eggs in the plants, especially things like the um, water hyacinth there. And then the larva will hatch, or the nymphs will hatch out, and they go and they live underwater where they're extremely predacious. They'll hang out in the roots of all the water hyacinth, which doesn't sound too bad until you think about that's the fact where the fish lay their eggs, where the fry hatch, and then the fry go right up to the surface where they're easily eaten by the dragonfly larva. Now there's a few things that you can do to prevent this and a few things that you can do to treat this. And any larger fish will eat these, but all of my fish are too small to eat these larvae. Now the dragonfly larvae also do eat mosquito larvae, which can be beneficial, but as I've talked to you about in a previous video, mosquitoes are very easy to deal with. So I'll link to that here if you want to learn more about that. But for now, let's focus on the dragonfly larvae. Now this week I did do what's called a sweep of all my tubs. Simply means I took a large net like this one, and I went through all of the bottoms of all my tubs, both in the greenhouse and out of the greenhouse. In this particular tub, I pulled out about 15 dragonfly larvae. In this tub, I got some damselfly larvae, which are similar but a bit smaller, but just as dangerous to the fish that I raise. And I found nothing in any of the other ones other than the water boatmen. Now, the main way of preventing these guys, I have some in a bucket here to try and show you. Um, the way, main, the easiest way to prevent these guys is by putting fine netting over your tubs. Because I often use emergent plant growth, this has never been a viable solution for me. Now I am not a bug expert, so I'm sure you guys down in the comments will correct me if I'm wrong about what these are. But to me it looks like a dragonfly larva. And what's most dangerous about these guys is that they can live for several seasons. Most of their life is spent being this nymph stage, not an adult dragonfly. They can, uh, the eggs can survive the winter and then they'll rehatch the next spring, colonizing your tubs again. So the easiest thing to do is to cover your tub with netting. This prevents the dragonflies from laying their eggs in the tubs. However, it also prevents you from being able to have any emergent growth. 
In previous years, I think I didn't have a problem because there was so many plants. The fish would eat the eggs before they hatched in the dragonflies. But that's just a hypothesis. Um, so this year, I'm going to have to treat my tubs with a chemical that is a chitin inhibitor. And what that means is it prevents the larva from being able to molt properly, and then they die. Um, so we'll do that here in a little bit. The other thing, I, another pest I wanted to talk to you about was aphids. Aphids are really, really, really common, and the easiest thing to do is just dunk them into the water and the fish will eat them. Here we can see, hopefully, a dragonfly molt. So we know that this is a real problem in this tub. They molt many, many times and get bigger and bigger each time, up to about two inches. And I've been doing sweeps on this tub just about every day to try and get them out. In fact, there's one right beside the airline, right down there. Um, but it's obviously not enough. Now, the thing with the drugs that are used to get rid of dragonflies is they are obviously not at all shrimp or invertebrate safe. They'll kill my Daphnia population, which means I'll have to feed this tub. But I think it'll be worth it because so far I have seen zero fry and normally the fish that are in here are my biggest producers, so I'm sure that something is really wrong. So as I mentioned, I start by doing a sweep of my tubs to deal with dragonfly larvae. I remove as many as I can find. I have found that they tend to cling to the edges of the tubs, which makes them a bit easier to find, as well as in the roots of plants. So by moving some of the plants around, I can usually see them and then manually remove them. Now, because I'm sure there's more eggs and more larvae that I haven't found, I pulled about 20 out total from this tub, I'm going to dose with the medication. And this is Microglyph Lysin Anchor Worm. And the active ingredient is Dimelin. And what Dimelin does is it is a chitin inhibitor, which means uh, chitin is um, found in exoskeleton of insects and things like that. What this does is it prevents them from molting fully. As part of their normal life cycle, they molt frequently. So this will stop that. Now you do dose it at, at the, um, as the instructions on the back say. This is the pond strength, and it says one ounce per 300 gallons. Um, and it does recommend doing a 20% water change. Um, and it says to perform three treatments one week apart. I do not do that. I just dose it once a month. Now again, remember, this will kill crustaceans, things like my um, Daphnia, shrimp, and crayfish, uh, as well as mollusks and amphibians. So if you have something like frogs in your ponds that you don't want to impact, you definitely don't want to use this. I'm going to go get something to measure it, and then we'll dose and go from there. Now I've picked up a little liquid, um, it looks like a shot glass, but it's actually a dosing thing for medication. And the dosage for this medication is one ounce per 300 gallons. Now this is a 300 gallon tub, but it's not full. So I'm going to dose for about 200 gallons or three quarters of an ounce, give or take. And I'm just gonna broadcast it across the surface and we will repeat this in a month. Um, again, I'm only doing this in a tub where I've seen lots and lots of dragonfly larvae, and it's because I have not found any fry in here yet, and normally this tub would be teeming with fry at this point, so I really think that dragonflies, uh, th those larvae or nymphs have been doing a real number on, uh, on the eggs from the, from the white clouds that are in this tub. So just to recap, there are a lot of different predators that can impact our experience summer tubbing. Most of the wildlife ones can be managed by keeping your tubs pretty close to your house or elevating them. You can also use fencing or netting if you'd like. Uh, in the 12 years that I have been doing summer tubbing, the main issues I've always had have been aquatic insects. The damselflies and the dragonflies are really my biggest issue. And using something like a chitin inhibitor really can work quite well for doing that. Another thing that I do is I'll repot all my uh, aquatic plants that I overwinter into fresh soil each spring, hopefully to get rid of any dragonfly larvae or eggs that have, <laughs> have been laid in there before I close the tubs. Um, 
things like the bladder wart are a bit more difficult difficult to manage, but not nearly as deadly as those pred predatory insects. As always, thank you guys for your continued support. Please make sure you're subscribed and have that notification bell on so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. I have a lot of exciting things planned for you. As always, let me know below if you have any comments, suggestions, or questions.